A second shipment of medical supplies from China arrived in Argentina on Monday to assist the efforts against the COVID-19 pandemic. U.S. oil prices have turned negative for the first time in history as demand dries up in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. The United Nations Children's Fund appealed on Monday for an additional $92.4 million to help fight the coronavirus in the Middle East and North Africa. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the South, I'm Katrina Goss. <laughs> A second shipment of medical supplies from China arrived in Argentina on Monday to assist in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. The cargo includes personal protective equipment for health personnel, including face masks and COVID-19 test kits. This initiative forms part of the efforts by the governments of Argentina and China to contain the spread of the coronavirus. The Argentinian government announced that it will extend the airlift established with China to continue this international cooperation. To date, Argentina has reported 2,941 confirmed COVID-19 cases and 36 deaths, while 737 patients have recovered from the virus. Venezuelan Vice President Delcy Rodriguez reported new cases of the coronavirus on Monday while offering an evaluation of the measures adopted to fight COVID-19. We want to inform that in the last 24 hours, 29 new cases have been presented, seven of them in the state of Miranda, one in the state of Portuguesa, and 21 cases in the state of Nueva Esparta. The government of El Salvador has established a quarantine in the capital city as part of the preventative measures against the novel coronavirus. The measure establishes the closure of multiple streets in the centre of San Salvador. Local authorities indicate that the initiative seeks to stop the spread of the coronavirus by restricting the movement of residents in the capital. Police and troops will guarantee compliance with the quarantine that will last 48 hours. So far, the Department of San Salvador has reported 63 of the 218 confirmed COVID-19 cases in the country, which has seen seven deaths, while 46 patients have recovered from the virus. Yesterday, at the meeting of our Municipal Civil Protection Committee and accompanied by authorities of the central government, we decided to establish this cordon sanitary in the center of San Salvador, which includes approximately 400 urban blocks, and which will help with the containment and prevention of new cases of COVID-19 in our country. We have coordinated this quarantine directly through talks with the President of the Republic, who has made available 100 officers of the National Civil Police, plus troops of the armed forces, who will support the Metropolitan Corps with logistics and coordinations of the efforts to make this work. Latin America exceeded 100,000 COVID-19 cases this Sunday, while the death toll stood at almost 5,000, according to official data collected by several international agencies. Brazil, with a population of 210 million, is the country most affected by the pandemic in the region, accounting for 39,548 cases. Peru remains in second place with more than 16,000 positive cases, while over 400 people have died. Chile ranks third in Latin America with over 10,500 confirmed cases and 139 deaths among its more than 18 million inhabitants. Meanwhile, Ecuador, one of the most affected countries in the region, with an official tally of over 9,000 cases and more than 400 deaths, deaths have seen widespread claims of a lack of testing and reporting of the real figures. More stories coming up after this very short break, so don't go away. U.S. oil prices have turned negative for the first time in history as demand dries up in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. This means that oil producers are now paying buyers to take the commodity off their hands over fears that storage capacity could run out in May. The coronavirus lockdowns across the world have meant demand for oil has plummeted. As a result, oil firms have resorted to renting tankers to store the surplus supply, forcing the price of U.S. oil into negative territory.
The price of a barrel of West Texas Intermediate, the benchmark for U.S. oil, fell from around $18 to as low as minus $37.63 a barrel on Monday, down over 300% from the previous day's close. The collapse in oil markets comes amid a generalised economic downturn and many analysts believe that the recession sparked by the coronavirus pandemic in most of the world's economies will be the deepest since the Great Depression of the 1930s. And more than 777,000 people have been infected with the novel coronavirus in the United States and at least 41,000 people have died, according to John Hopkins University. Governors across the country this Sunday denied the Trump administration's claims that states are conducting a sufficient level of coronavirus testing. Public health experts have said testing would need to at least double or even triple to allow even a partial reopening of the U.S. economy. And the tensions between President Trump and several governors of the United States continue to grow in the midst of the health crisis sparked by the novel coronavirus. Our correspondent Jorge Hestoso brings us the details. Thank you. The increase of coronavirus is not stopping. We're talking about three quarters of a million of cases in the U.S. and over 40,000 deaths. We're talking double the number since one week ago. And there is a lot of tension, a lot of arguments between governors and President Trump regarding the test kits. Uh, now, President Trump is uh, passing the responsibility to, to the governors. The governors said they cannot take it because the federal government is not providing them even with the elements in order to produce the test kits. And that's it's absolutely uh, considered by the medical world essential in order to really decide when to open the economy. Most of uh, the people are willing uh, that uh, do it in a, in a very cautious way. We're talking about two to one, according to a Pew Hispanic and Pew Research Center poll that says that 66% uh, of them say that it's too early to open the economy against 32% that is not too early. At the same time, the governors, for example, the one of Washington and the one of Virginia are blaming President Trump to uh, push uh, to create violence in terms of pushing to create demonstrations in different cities of the country asking to their local officials to open the economy and uh, those governors are saying that, is that those protests are being organized by pro-Trump activists. So uh, the situation is that um, very carefully uh, the governments of different uh, states are deciding uh, how to release uh, the opening of the economy, in some cases Beaches are being opened, in some cases parks have been opened, and uh, the issue is that until the country does not know exactly how many people have cases of uh, coronavirus, it's extremely difficult to make a plan. And that's exactly what I say that President Trump is not doing. He's not proposing a plan, and therefore they are leaving uh, the responsibility to the states in order, according to analysts, to skip the blame and uh, they could blame someone else. Uh, they have been blaming China, the OMS, uh, the CDC, the Democrats, and now he's trying to push, pass the ball to the governors in order to say that if something is going wrong, it's going to be their responsibility because the governors say that Donald Trump has been extremely slow in the response uh, of this pandemic and also very inefficient the way he did it. We get back to you now. China called for the international community to remain united on Monday rather than blaming each other for the coronavirus pandemic, following comments by US President Donald Trump that his government was investigating whether the novel coronavirus originated in a lab in Wuhan. Some people in the United States must understand that their enemy is the virus, not China. The international community can overcome the virus only if it can stay united and cooperative to make concerted efforts. Attacking and discrediting other countries simply cannot save the wasted time and lost lives. 
Our performance and contribution have been widely commended by the international community. Any question about China's transparency in epidemic prevention and control is neither in line with the facts, but also disrespectful of the Chinese people's tremendous efforts and sacrifices to prevent and control the epidemic. The Director General of the World Health Organization, Tedros Adhemin Trebiesis, insisted on Monday that the UN agency has not concealed any information it had about the coronavirus pandemic from the United States. But at the same time, having CDC staff means there is nothing hidden from the U.S. from day one. Because these are Americans who are working with us and it just comes naturally and they just tell what they are doing. And for WHO, it's open. We don't hide anything. It's open not only for CDC. The number of daily COVID-19 deaths registered in Spain fell to 399, representing the lowest figure since March 22nd, according to latest health ministry figures. Today we have a total of 2,881 new cases. This is the first time in a long time that we've gone below 3,000 cases. Furthermore, this figure is also supported by figures from hospitalizations, intensive care admissions and deaths. Today, for the first time, we have dropped below 400 deaths. It is true that 399 deaths is a little bit below that, but these are marks that give us hope despite the fact that we are still talking about people who have died. They give us hope. These 399 deaths represent an increase of 2% since yesterday, which is also a continuous decrease in recent weeks. Germany began allowing small shops and businesses to reopen on Monday, although strict social distancing rules remain in place. Germany's health minister said authorities would be keeping a very close eye on any changes in the course of the coronavirus epidemic as they embark on a plan to slowly relax some lockdown restrictions across the country. Germany has confirmed more than 146,000 coronavirus cases and reported more than 4,700 deaths. However, the mortality rate has been significantly lower than in countries with comparable case figures due to the response capacity of its health system and widespread testing. Singapore reported a daily high of 1,426 new COVID-19 cases on Monday. The latest figures brought the total to 8,014. The vast majority of the new cases, over 1,300, are work permit holders living in foreign worker dormitories, according to a Ministry of Health update on Monday night. Some 200,000 foreign workers, the majority from South Asia, work in Singapore. Of the over 3,000 confirmed coronavirus cases in the country who remain in hospital, most are in a stable or improving condition, while 23 are in a critical condition in intensive care units. A total of 3,782 cases who are clinically well but still tested positive for COVID-19 are isolated and cared for at community facilities. Singapore is now the worst hit country in Southeast Asia, surpassing figures in Indonesia and the Philippines. And we're taking one last break now, but stay with us for more. Welcome back to From the South. The United Nations Children's Fund appealed on Monday for an additional $92.4 million to help fight the coronavirus in the Middle East and North Africa, a conflict-torn region with the highest number of children in need. According to UNICEF Regional Director Ted Chaban, the additional funding is needed for a range of programmes across the region to soften the blow of the pandemic. Yemen is a top concern, said Chaban, as after five years of civil war, half of its health centres no longer operate and two million children are malnourished, including 400,000 under the age of five who are suffering from severe acute malnutrition. So far, there has only been one confirmed coronavirus case in Yemen, but testing capabilities are limited and there are concerns the virus may be spreading undetected. More than 218,000 cases of COVID-19 have been reported across the Middle East, including close to 8,000 deaths, the vast majority in Iran. The Middle East for UNICEF was already uh, the place where 50% of our global humanitarian action was taking place. 
because of conflict, because of uh, uh, dry and climate change. Uh, we have 25 million children in the region in need of humanitarian assistance, so there was already a vulnerability. Uh, and now COVID-19 comes on top of that vulnerability in places like Yemen, Syria, uh, Iraq, uh, Sudan. The central market of Ouagadougou, capital of Burkina Faso, has reopened almost a month after its closure due to the coronavirus, to the great relief of traders. The informal economy in our country accounts for 49% of our GDP and more than 90% of Burkina we work in this sector. It also has a social character. Statistics show that Ouagadougou has 3 million inhabitants with about 500,000 households. So reopening Ruduwoko is enabling these households to live with dignity without falling into precariousness and deprivation. Our behavior here is decisive. It is decisive because it allows us to learn. It allows us to gradually open up other markets. It will allow us to work towards the resumption of transport activities. It will soon allow us to work towards the resumption of activities in the streets and stations. And it will therefore allow us, if we manage to overcome the disease very quickly, to lift the other measures. The opening up of the market must not be allowed to become a black spot in this process, which has already begun. Kenya is not just facing the coronavirus pandemic and huge swarms of locusts, but has now also been hit by flash floods that have left thousands displaced across the country. At least four people were reported dead after heavy rains pounded parts of Kenya. Rift Valley Regional Commissioner George Natembeyam informed this Monday that 23 people were also missing after rains caused a river to burst its banks. Local volunteers and rescue workers continue to search for the dead and missing on Sunday and Monday morning, as well as lifting out livestock stuck deep in the mud. The town of Chesogon was totally submerged by the flash floods, leaving over 400 families homeless. A local boarding school in the area was among the buildings totally destroyed. Usually home to hundreds of children, the school was empty, having been closed earlier this month due to the coronavirus outbreak. 23 people can now be traced. Those are the ones we are searching for. Their families have come forward to report that they are missing and we have found many injured that have been taken to the hospital for treatment. At least five women and children died in a stampede in the town of Gamburu, Nigeria, as a crowd of displaced people rushed to receive aid. The town of Gamburu, near the border with Cameroon, is a region hit by jihadist violence. Thousands of women had gathered at a primary school for handouts of $13 and clothing supplied by Borno State Governor Babagana Umaru Sulum, leading to the stampede which also saw many people injured and taken to local hospitals, according to Uma Kachala, who heads a local anti-jihadist militia force. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad met on Monday with Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Sarif on a one-day visit to the war-torn country. Sarif held separate meetings with the Syrian President and Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Walid al-Mulim. He also thanked Syrian representatives for having participated in the funeral procession for Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, who was assassinated by the U.S. in Iraq. President al-Assad expressed condolences for those who have lost their lives to the coronavirus in Iran, where the COVID-19 death toll has surpassed 5,200. Referring to the role of General Soleimani in the fight against terrorism in Syria, al-Assad thanked Iran for standing by the Syrian people. Nigerian singer-songwriter Burna Boy was one of the African artists who joined the One World Together at Home global online concert on Saturday to raise funds for the World Health Organization's Coronavirus Relief Fund. And we finish this news brief with clips of his performance. Remember that you can find these and many other stories on our website at tellysoenglish.net as well as on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For Telly so English, I'm Katrina Goss. Thank you for watching and enjoy the music. Passing when you know, no, making them look, oh no, make you know.
they do like go to go Can nobody do it better Better than me Can nobody do it better Jack a man I know say one day you go better Go carry gram me Because anything way better Require planning Don't be, don't be Nothing you can do Because God didn't go give you more than you can undo Now so the mama go hala He believe it Now so the papa go hala He believe it Oh, for the rivers and trees, and, trees, and, trees. and I saw me sing hallelujah. 